Hello, I'm Chris Rhodes with Hanga Hanga Fuel. Today we're going to go over cutting edge bullets, handgun and wrappers. We have quite a few blog articles out there going over their terminal performance and load data that you can still read on the blog. But today we're going to make a video going over them in detail to hopefully help you make a better selection for your handgun hunting bullet this fall. First off, we need to go over the technology differences between cutting edge bullets, handgun wrappers, fracturing technology, and traditional expanding bullets. So I'm going to use the parachute example like I did in the blog article that seemed to resonate well with readers. Both types of bullets, when they impact game and hit fluid-filled tissue, both expand. That's like a skydiver deploying his parachute. When the skydiver deploys his parachute, he rapidly slows down and he feels himself sink down in the harness. Well, that's what the bullets do. When the bullets do that, they're delivering their energy to the target. That's where they create the hydrostatic shock, the permanent wound channels, and so forth. But where it starts to differ is the expanding bullet continues to pass through the animal with its expanded hollow point rapidly slowing as it's going into the animal. Fracturing design, this is the base off a of 45 caliber, 240 grain, like I used in the 460 SMW sitting back there behind me. Once these pedals, which are actually quite large, expand out to roughly 90 degrees, they shear off of the bullet. That's like the skydiver cutting his parachute away and getting rid of all that resistance. Then this base of this bullet continues to pass through. These pedals then radiate out in about a 45 degree angle away from the bullet's flight path, going about seven inches deep. And that's what I actually see in game animals and tissue. They create four separate wound channels while the base of the bullet continues to exit with less resistance. It's a wad cutter basic shape, so it's still delivering quite a bit of energy to the target, similar to what like a lead semi wad cutter would do. What I see here happening is the best of both worlds. I'm getting wound channels equal to the jacket and hollow point, sometimes more. They go about eight inches deep where they're larger in diameter than, than the caliber. Um, and that's with both designs, with both a jacket and hollow point design or with the fracturing design. But the base is almost always exiting and I'm getting four additional wound channels from the pedals that radiate out away from the bullet's flight path. I'm going to use an example with the 44 Magnum that you also see sitting behind me used that gun for years and it's taken quite a few animals and quite a few elk. I have not had one single jacketed hollow point design bullet exit an elk out of that gun. But I have had almost every single cutting edge bullet handgun wrapper 200 grain bullet exit elk out to 100 yards. With the 460 SMW finding their 240 grain cutting edge wrappers, I've had them exit out to 220 yards. Having an exit is huge. That gives me a better blood trail. Having both an entrance and an exit leaves more blood on the ground. But what I'm also seeing with these is they're delivering more shock to the animal. And how I'm noticing that is because the animals stay on their feet a whole lot less time after the bullet's impact. I get a whole lot more of what I like to call bang flops. Um, generally with a jacketed hollow point on elk, I would always have some kind of track after the shot. With the handgun raptors, I'm having a whole lot more animals hit the ground immediately after the shot. And that's pretty amazing to me. They're, they're hitting with more force, more trauma, um, and more hydrostatic shock in the way they work. And it's putting them on the ground quicker. Um, so I'm hopefully I'm going to explain this in layman's terms because I am not a ballistician. That's an engineer in ballistics. I can only report what I see on game. And I can tell you these are putting them on the ground quicker for me than what my traditional hollow points were. Now loading these are completely different than other bullets out there. As in... If I was loading traditional jacketed hollow points or lead bullets in my Magnum cartridges, I'd be jumping to H110 or Little Gun or something like that to get the velocity out of them. These have almost no bore resistance. The way they do their bands on the bullets reduces their drag in the bore and reduces their drag inside the case when they're getting start their start pressure. We have to use faster powders. I have found A9 or Accurate Arms number 9 and Ramshot Enforcer to be the go-to powders. I have low dead on the blog from the 357 through the 500 SMW. I don't have every cartridge in the middle, but it should give you some kind of starting ideas. If, say, if you're going to load 41 Magnum, which I don't have developed, one of these two powders is going to work. And you can find similar low data out there in the manuals and work up the same way I did with them. Um, I've also found Magnum primers to be of utmost importance. I get a significant gain in velocity using Magnum primers uh, versus non Magnum. Um, that's the key though, is faster powders. There are faster powders that get you higher velocity, but they also get a higher velocity swing from shot to shot. 
Whereas in these, as long as I load them to where it's lightly compressed, meaning the, the bullet base is just barely compressing the powder, I get very tight velocities and very good accuracy. Their bullets are, their accuracy is second to none. If you've looked at King of the Two Mile, and I know we're talking about handguns here, but if you look at King of the Two Mile competitions for rifles, if they're winning, they're shooting cutting edge bullets. There's no reason to think that that same technology they're using in those rifles isn't going to benefit your handgun. I'm getting exceptional, exceptional accuracy, and you can see a lot of the accuracy reporting in my Spore Revolver write-ups where I've been writing about the cutting-edge wrappers, and you can see it with some of the hand-loading data, too, with the groups we've posted. So if you're not a hand-loader, they do make a few loadings that are applicable to handgun hunting in their personal defense line of ammunition. They make a 357 140 grain load that'll work just fine on, say, whitetail and antelope and such. They also make some solids that might be very appropriate for things like hogs and such where you can shoot them in the shoulders um, and then like bear defense scenarios um, but they make those solids in various calibers uh, 357 is their largest caliber they make or their largest cartridge they make as far as hunting goes um, but say so you have that option there if you're not a hand loader so if you have questions for me you can reach out to me at handgunhuntingafield at gmail.com you can jump on handgunhuntingafield.blog and read the previous post about the handgun wrappers, or you can join the forum and ask questions through there as well, and I can even give you more load data and advice through the forum or through email. I hope this information helps you make a better selection for your handgun hunting bullet this fall.